Good morning. It's a pleasure for me to be in this meeting. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to talk about the pharmacogenetic in the ovarian response. The goal of the assisted reproductive technologies is to achieve uh, safely a live birth in a patient-friendly and a cost-effective manner. Control ovarian stimulation is an integral part of the IVF, and the aim of the control ovarian stimulation is to obtain the optimum number of oocytes that allows us to select the most viable embryo for transfer. Uh, from, from my point of view, and according to recent papers, we think that the, uh, the optimum number of oocytes is 10 to 12 oocytes to uh, allow us to select the most uh, viable embryo for transfer and to achieve a successful IVF. But we need to take in account that the embryo aneuploidy rate is female age dependent, and it goes from 30% uh, in women younger than 35 to 90% in women older than 42. And once we select and transfer the opioid embryo, the embryo implantation potential is female age independent. So the clinicians should decide what is the optimum strategy, what is the optimum protocol to obtain the correct number that maximizes the female age chances to obtain at least one aeuploid blastocyst. The vast majority of the women respond suitable to the treatment. However, from 9 to 24 percent of the patients respond poorly and expected to the treatment selected according to the clinical characteristics. And on the other hand, a high response could produce a serious medical condition, high uh, hyperstimulation syndrome. Identification in advance, patient that will carry out a poor or a high response will be of a great interest of such patients. Different predictive marker has been proposed, for example, age, uh, hormonal status, and uh, antifolicular counts, other ovarian marker, reserve markers, etc. Uh, in fact, different model has been created to uh, predict the ovarian stimulation success and to individualize the ovarian control stimulation. However, the last publication by the Crocaran uh, database concludes that they don't find that tailoring the FSH in any particular ovarian reserve test influence rate of live birth or ongoing pregnancy. So it seems that uh, despite these uh, parameters, genetic variability plays an, uh, an important role. And as you know, a genetic variability in response to drugs exists, and gonadotropin is not an exception. So if we are talking about the genetic, uh, the effect of the genetic in the ovarian response, we are talking about the pharmacogenetics. The application of pharmacogenetics to ovarian response, to reproductive medicines, allows us to predict the uh, ovarian stimulation success and to, could be used to tailor the treatment. The main advance in molecular biology was the human DNA sequencing, and this project was completed in 2007 by the human haplotype that's identified over 3 million of, a SNP in, of a SNPs. A SNP is a single nucleotide substitution at a specific position at the genome, and a SNPs underline phenotype modulation, predisposition disease, environmental effects, and drug response. Different polymorphisms in different genes has been proposed uh, to be related with the ovarian response. However, the pharmacogenetics approach with regards to FSH dosing is, st is still emerging. Most studies have been focused on FSH receptor gene polymorphisms, and other uh, studies have been focused in other polymorphisms related with other metabolomic pathways. However, more data are needed to clarify their effects. Now we are talking about the well-studied polymorphism, the FSH receptor gene polymorphism. Um, obviously, if we are talking about the variant response and the drug that we use for the variant stimulation is FSH. The first target gene to check is its receptor, the FSH receptor. The FSH receptor gene is located in the PR of chromosome 2, and it contains 10 actions and about 900 SNPs are located in the, in the gene. But only eight are located in the coding region, and only two are related with the variant response. The first one is located at position 307 and consists in a substitution between a threonine and a lanolin. 
And the second one consists is located at position 680 and consists in a substitution between a serine and asparagine. Both polymorphies are a linkage disequilibrium. So in order to simplify these studies, we only refer to the last one. The first evidence that this polymorphism is related with ovarian response was published by Perez Mallorca in 2000, and he concluded that patients that carry serine serine genotype uh, has higher level FSH basal levels and requires higher units of gonadotropin for ovarian response. Since the publication of this paper, a lot of papers and meta-analysis have been uh, published about this topic to conclude uh, the same results. And the last paper that I would like to show you is this paper that we, pub we published uh, some years ago, and we performed this study in egg donors in order to avoid confounding factors, because donors are a um, fertile woman with a uh, normal ovulation, younger, good quality eggs, etc. In this study, we conclude uh, the same result as Perez Mallorca, um, patient that carries certain serine genotype requires uh, more units of gonadotropins, and we obtain less number of oocytes when we compare with the other genotypes. Okay, if we continue step by step through the individualized IVF stimulation protocols, the next step will be the clinical application. For instance, using FSH receptor gene polymorphism, we are able to identify patients that will carry out a poor response. However, the next step will be if we can, we can change the drug or change the doses in order to improve the ovarian stimulation response in these patients. With this assumption, we perform this study. As you know, various FSH products in terms of uh, purification, extraction, recombinant or union has been proposed, has been developed. However, no clear superiority of one product from each other has been uh, evidenced. Uh, in this study, the aim of this study was to show if uh, the FSH receptor gene polymorphisms affect the ovarian response according to the nature of the FSH that we use for the ovarian stimulation. To achieve this objective, we performed this study, and we include uh, 382 patients uh, egg donors that perform two cycles. Patients in group one perform one cycle with recombinant FSH, and the second one with highly purified FSH. Patients in group two perform both cycles with highly purified FSH, and patients in group three, three perform both cycles with recombinant FSH. We compare the results uh, from the both uh, cycles with the same patient, in the same patient. This is the result from group one of patients. When we compared the results in total, no significant differences were seen between the cycles with recombinant or a highly purified FSH. However, when we compared the results according to the FSH receptor gene polymorphism, significant differences were found. Oh, sorry. <laughs> For patients that carry uh, the boxes <laughs> below, the, uh, the patient that carries serine serine genotype require higher units of gonadotropins, and we obtain less number of oocytes when we use recombinant FSH for ovarian stimulation. For patients, on the other hand, for patients that carry serine asparagine genotypes, more uh, require more units of gonadotropins, and we obtain less number of retrieved oocytes when they use highly purified FSH and no significant differences were reported for patients that carries asparagine asparagine genotype. In order to show if these results are due to uh, the effect of the FSH receptor gene polymorphism or due to intercycle variation, intercycle variability, we compare the results in patients from group two and group three. And no significant differences were reported when we compared both cycles in total and according to the FSH receptor gene polymorphism patients in group two and patients in group three. So from our results, we can conclude that patients that carry serine serine genotype respond more efficiently when they use highly purified FSH. Patients that carry asparagine uh, serine genotype respond more efficiently when they use recombinant FSH and no significant differences for patients that carry the wild type genotype asparagine asparagine. These results are very interesting to individualize the variant stimulation, 
However, the much more interesting question uh, will be if we, uh, for, for poor ovarian responders, which the difference between one or two oocytes could be the opportunity to achieve a live birth. So uh, we think in another gene, in another target gene for these patients, the androgen receptor gene. And why the androgen receptor? Because different strategies have been developed uh, using androgens in order to increase the androgen serum levels and to improve the ovarian response in poor ovarian responders. The androgen effect is mediated through the androgen receptor gene, androgen receptor, code, codes by the androgen receptor gene. The androgen receptor gene is located in the X chromosome and it contains a highly polymorphic tract within the exon one that consists in a three nucleotide repeat, and different length in this in vivo and in vitro stu studies show that different length in this polymorphism could affect the receptor activity. We performed a study when we were to show if the uh, length in this polymorphism affect the ovarian reserve or the ovarian response. This is uh, we performed this study in about 200 patients, and this is the distribution of uh, the polymorphisms in our populations. And this is the results. The length in the androgen receptor gene polymorphism is related with the number of antrofollicular counts, so it's related with the ovarian reserve, but is not uh, related with the ovarian response in terms of gonadotropin consumption, number of free trifocytes, uh, number of days of stimulation, etc. So from this result, we can conclude that the uh, androgen receptor gene polymorphism is not uh, affecting the ovarian response. But uh, this ovarian stimulation was performed with a standard stimulation protocol. So we need to think that if these polymorphisms affect the ovarian stimulation using androgens in the ovarian stimulation. With this assumption, we performed the study. We include uh, patients that follow the Bologna criteria. We include 54 patients that perform both cycles the first cycle without androgen pretreatment, and the second cycle with testosterone pretreatment. When we compare the result of both cycles in these patients, in total, no significant differences were found uh, in, the, in the ovarian response. And these results agree with the clinical trial published by Bosdo, uh, that he concluded that there is no benefit of the use of androgens to improve the ovarian response in poor ovarian responders. However, when we uh, analyze the results according to the number of repeats, we found that patient that carries a number of repeats between 22 and 24, we obtain more oocytes when they use androgen as a pretreatment. However, no significant differences were found for patients with uh, less than 22 or higher, with a number of repeats, lower than 22 or higher than 24. The same results were obtained for the number of mature oocytes. So using the androgen receptor gene polymorphism, we are able to identify patients that will be benefit of the use of androgens as a pretreatment. So from uh, our results and from other authors, we think that the effect of the genetic in the ovarian response uh, are not due to only one gene. It's a, a, a multilocus uh, uh, model. And the effect of small genes are involved in the ovarian response. So for that reason, we designed a, a genetic profile in order to identify, that includes several polymorphisms in different genes, to identify genetic predisposition to ovarian response and to adjust the control ovarian stimulation treatment to improve the ovarian response in order to choose the best gonadotropin and to know if the androgens uh, could be useful. As a conclusion, a strong evidence has found between polymorphins on FSA receptor gene and ovarian response, and it could be used to predict the ovarian response to identification non and high responders and to select the best drug. Androgen receptor gene polymorphisms could be used to identify patients that will be benefit of the use of androgens, and multilocus model give us the best approach for clinical application. I would like to, th to, to say thank you to all the Institute of Bernabeu because it is a teamwork, and obviously, thank you for your attention.